What's trucking y'all, it's your guy Naze. Just giving tips and strategies while avoiding tragedies. In today's uh, box truck trip tip video, we will fix the O-ring on a Freightliner M2. The O-ring is gonna be right behind your air filter, right in between here where that hole is in that bracket. That's where you have your O-ring, right? And there for the heater cord that's the heater cord lines so um, you got the small one on the right side which is here and then you got the big one on the left side which is there so that's the small one and the big one you can also um, tell when you get your new o-rings one is smaller and one's bigger as you can see, there's residue there too. It shoots out. It's all in the bottom too. So I just got tired of it. I, I was figuring it was getting worse, so decided to finally fix it. We're also going to be changing the air filter since we're already here. It's going to be right here. All right, so the O-ring for the heater core is going to be back here. It's kind of hard to see, but right behind the air filter, it's going to be this uh, hose right, right, uh, right inside here. I'll, I'll put the camera there. So, right there. Those are where the o rings are. That's where it's dripping from. So we're gonna have to remove the air filter and the housing and the, the hose, the tube. And then there's a T, uh, T screw right there you gotta take out. Let's see here, right there. And there's another one holding it, which is right here. It's already off so once you remove that then the hose can come free and you can swap out the o-ring as you can see is this residue right there it's leaking from there see the coolant dripping down right where the o-ring is Okay, the one goes on the right side there is this one. It goes to this hose down there, over there. Connects to that hose. Okay, so that one in here, that this pipe here, it, it goes in this bracket thing here and then cut. To make it come out you gotta pull down and come out like so so when you put it back put it inside that bracket thing when you put the new o-ring on onto the heater core make sure you clean uh that housing there Also, this uh, one that goes on the right side there is the one that goes inside the loose end of that bracket. This one right here. That's the old O-ring. I'll be changing that. So the one that goes on the right side, this is the smaller one. The one that I said is the open. Uh, the one the, the open clamp here that goes on the right side there right there that's the right side that's the left side that's the smaller one and you can even tell by the whole size right? that's the smaller one that's the bigger one 
All right, so I got the new O-rings on. These are the old ones. I kind of was too busy to record, but hopefully it still can help. These are kind of warp. They're way wider than the uh, new ones. The new the new O-rings were more smaller, more more um, not expanded out like this. This one's even starting to crack. So I think this might fix the problem. Uh, yeah, I think it will, hopefully. So as I was changing it out, I covered up the turbo because I took the, when I took the intake uh, filter off, I took it off to the t connection to the turbo. So this probably be a nice time to, uh, you know, spray in there a little bit and clean up or just wipe in there. Uh, I don't think that'll hurt. The screw holding that on, that's a T27 for the pipes there, for the uh, heater core. T27 will get it off. Um, the one there was already off, so I don't know what that one is. And there's another one here too for the bigger hose. If you can tell. It's right here and that's off too so it was easy for me to take them off get them loose now I just gotta clean this turbo a little bit put some cooling back put the filter back and it should be good all right I got the clamp for the turbo tying down both of them now you're gonna want to Plug in the sensor, air sensor. And then, you should hear a click. I guess I can't do that right now. And then, put back the filter, throw in some coolant, should be good. Now would also be a good time to change the air filter. Uh, this is the new one here. This is the old one. You're gonna wanna do it every, I say it would be good maybe every 30 to 50,000 miles. This one doesn't look too terribly bad, but while I'm there, I'll change it. I tried cleaning it a little bit, but it's good to change it. I already drove it about that mile, so this is the part number here. It was about 50 some dollars, 55 dollars. So what you do is you take it off from the housing. Three screws here. There you go. Don't worry about the screws. The new one comes with screws, as you can see three screws right there there's a third one so I'll just take this out separate it from the housing throw in, throw in the new filter it should be good alright so I got the new one uh, ready to go in here's the old one before you throw on the new one it wouldn't hurt wiping down in here maybe vacuuming it if it needs it then just throw the new one in screw the three bolts I mean screws then you can throw it on the truck when you put it back on I got the new filter inside just tighten it to the hose Oh, also, I forgot to mention, you're going to have a lot of oil, I mean, uh, coolant leaks when you're changing that. So you can first drain this reservoir, or you can just uh, let it leak from right there where it comes off at, where the O-rings are for the heater core, right there. So, yeah, you're going to want to be aware of that. That's why I have a drain bucket there. 
and uh, so these are T40 screws you have three of them one two and then three's over here uh, right there so you're gonna connect all three of those and you'll be good to go and then you just throw some coolant back and it should be good so the new air filter is back on got the t40 all tightened up also it's good to have a magnetic tool just in case if you drop screws just got to fill this back up with coolant i'm not sure how many gallons it takes but it's going to be a lot i think all right so far it took four gallons to get it back to the full line now I'll start the truck, leave the cap open. That way any air that was introduced can exit. It might bubble inside here while well, it do that. And um, we'll circulate through the engine and all that. And if I need to add more, I can add more. Allowing it to run with the cooling cap off will let you get any air that's introduced out. But you can only do this while it's not hot. Once it's hot, I'll definitely shoot out, so you want to have it closed. Only do it when it's, uh, you know, when it's cold and you're running for a couple of few minutes. You might see some bubbles pop out. Uh, let all the air out. And uh, if you need to add, you can add some more. Uh, should be good to go. Uh, as you can see, it's running right now. It's been running about five, three to five minutes. I'm going to close it back up. Give it a good drive. Hopefully that should take care of it. I ran it for about 30 minutes. Everything was fine. Um, I was looking at the temperature. It was good. Everything looks good. Let's see how the O-ring looks like. It looks nice and dry. I think I took care of the problem. I'm not seeing any leaks. So, the o rings were only like, one was like a dollar some, almost two, and the other one was like two or three dollars. So, you can get the parts for under five dollars. That will take care of your problem. You don't have to fix the heater core. All right. Alright, so I added four gallons. That seemed to be the magic number. It's still full. Ran it about 15 minutes. Um, still full. Everything worked great. Also, I forgot to mention when you clean the turbo, when you have all this apart, I use brake cleaner. So just make sure you be careful about that because this has an intake heater. So um, you just want to use very little, a couple of sprays and wipe it off. And that should do just fine. Um, other than that, hopefully you got something useful. Like and share. Thanks.